Hi there everyone, I'm Peter from the Calva team. Calva is an extension to Visual Studio Code in which it enables delightful interactive programming using Clojure. I can highly recommend it, whether you use Calva or something else. Today I would uh, like to introduce you to the Calva debugger. It was built by Brandon Rinch and when he was uh, sponsored by Closures Together for a while. And he didn't need to do all the groundwork himself because Butidar Batsov has made a lot of that powering the side of the bugger. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can use it. And here we will start uh, Calva's getting started REPL just to have somewhere to tr try the debugger in an easy way. We'll let the REPL start here, and then we will close uh, the terminal and the Cal output window. And here we can convince ourselves that the REPL is running because we can evaluate this string. And then we will go down. In this guide, there is an introduction to the debugger, so I'm going to use that one to demonstrate the use of the debugger. So here you have a function, a famous function actually, that has a bug. So if we evaluate this one and we call it with two as an argument, everything works, but if we call it with 24, things blow up. So that's no fun, right? How would we go on and debug this enclosure? So one way we can do it is to use inline definitions. So we here we define n, the local uh, the, we bind the local n to the global n, and then we call the function again. We evaluate the function and call the function again. And now n will be defined in the global scope so that we can evaluate expression containing n. So you can see here that n bigger than 40 is false, but n bigger than 20 is true. So we will enter this form here, and that blows up. And it's actually this first n that blows up because you can't take first of an integer that needs to be a collection so that's definitely one way to do it and it works for many cases but sometimes it can be of course more complicated uh, than this let us uh, remove this global binding of n first here so if we remove that one you can see now, now we can't evaluate, evaluate these expressions because n is not in the global scope, which is what the Calva REPL can help you evaluate. Uh, so let us uh, try this with the debugger then. So what we do is we will instrument this form for debugging. There are many ways to do this, but anyway. Uh, and then we call it again. And now the debugger opens and it stops at the first breakpoint. So the side debugger will have like instrumented this with several breakpoints. And you can see here that we stepped through the debugger and now things uh, uh, stopped working. Okay, so we will close that again. And now we want to uninstrument uh, the form and that you, you do that by evaluating the top level form and then it will not be instrumented for debugger, debugging anymore. But let's just show that it could be easier sometimes to use the debugger than these inline definitions to inspect stuff. So let's say we have something a bit more <laughs> complicated as inputs to this function. So this one will take an, a map with the keys n, x, and y. And uh, we will, uh, yeah, we can change that to plus n x or n plus n x and y, of course, if you, will, if you like. And here we can take n from the arguments. Uh, and that is, of course, and so it will do the, this part will do the same as it did before. And now if we evaluate this function and we call it again, uh, breaks, but yeah, it breaks in a different way because we're not giving it a map for it, right? So let's give it a map. Uh, 
So n should be 2 here. And we give x and y some values. I like the value of 42. So, and we do the same for this function, or this call. And it's 24 here, and yeah, we can take the same values for x and y. And now if we call it there, we still get the same answer. And if we call it uh, with n24, it should blow up as before, right? Which it does. Now, if we would um, debug this using inline definitions, uh, and we don't really know where it goes wrong, then we might need to inline define all the arguments and I will, yeah, or oh, maybe you're interested in what's in the orgs map. Uh, that could be a bit tedious. I mean, it can be a bit more arguments than this to a function. Instead, what you can do is to instrument this uh, for debugging. So we do that again. And now when we call it, it will stop in the debugger again. And you can see there that we have uh, the values and, uh, for n, x, and y. And you can actually use just regular Calva uh, evaluation commands and evaluate stuff inside the function. So, yeah, so that this is a very neat way actually to to um, quickly <laughs> inline def uh, stuff uh, for yourself. It's very good to know. That was um, what I wanted to say and show you about the debugger. You can see and you go to Calva IO and you will find information about the debugger there because there are more things about it that you might want to look into. This was just a very quick primer. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel and, and also um, hit the like button so, or, and comment and share this video. Thank you.